Hey everybody, Griffin Hales from EBR back here with you today, and I have an extremely exciting review for you with the newly released Rad Runner 3 Plus from Rad Power Bikes. This is the e-bike that Rad dubs as the do-it-all bike for do-it-all lives. It's a highly versatile utility bike with a smaller profile than your typical cargo bike, but in many ways it's just as capable. Utility bikes like the Runner excel at adapting to a rider's needs. If you want it for joyriding, commuting, grocery getting, or riding with a plus one, be that a child or even an adult. With such versatile use cases and an easily accessible step through design, it's not hard to envision any rider finding a use for this bike. The original Rad Runner is without a doubt a pioneer in the utility e-bike class. And the Rad Runner 3 Plus you see here marks quite the overhaul to its looks and it's upped its game with expanded capabilities by lengthening the rear rack and reinforcing it to carry more weight than ever before. Rad's also debuting some new accessories, including a custom trailer that's compatible with the Runner 3 Plus, which is great for cargo or pets, which gives you even more options for what you can do, making this a feasible car substitute. There are a lot of new things to discuss, and of course we want to let you know how it rides and how it feels. So let's take a closer look at how the Rad Runner 3 Plus stacks up. Now, before we get things started, please take a moment to click the subscribe button and notification bell. It helps support the channel in our efforts to bring you more e-bike coverage. The team here at EBR has made no secret that we have a love for utility bikes. If done right, they are some of the easiest bikes to recommend because they can be whatever you need it to be. Now the if done right part all starts with making it easy and appealing to ride, and the Runner 3 Plus definitely checks those boxes as this is the most evolved Rad Runner in terms of both looks and function. The Rad Runner 3 Plus has adopted the super sleek, semi-integrated battery look that's found on its sibling Rad City and Rad Rover models. And this model has more tubes that reinforce the frame, giving this runner the highest payload capacity to date of 350 pounds. It's definitely the best looking Rad Runner, in my opinion, from top to bottom. It's far less utilitarian looking than previous versions, and other than perhaps these exposed uh, connectors here atop the neoprene sleeve are the only detractors on what is otherwise just a much sharper looking bike. Now, it's easy for most anybody to ride thanks to the step through frame and 17 inch standover height. Rad says the geometry should be comfortable for riders four foot 11 up to six foot two. I myself am six foot one, and I felt pretty good across all the miles that I logged on this bike even if I could sense I was on the margins of usability, I was still actually pretty comfy. The Runner 3 Plus just rides really well overall, thanks to the ergonomic design and the BMX style riser bars with 22 degree sweep. And of course the custom 3.3 inch wide fat tires that provide with a, a large footprint that make you feel stable on the roads. One thing I repeatedly come back to with Rad Motors is how they are some of the most consistent performers across each of their bikes that we've tested and the 750 watt rear hub motor featured on this Rad Runner is no different. The acceleration is in the sweet spot as it gives you a good boost without being overwhelming. And it can steadily get you to the top of hill climbs all by itself via the throttle or by giving you a good push through the pedal assistance. While the overall ride quality on the Runner 3 Plus is good enough to recommend on its own, the customization you have with how you can outfit the bike makes it great for a whole host of needs. If you want a full-fledged cargo machine, you can equip hard shell panniers, like the ones that we were sent for testing, or this hard shell top box also. They provide plenty of room and security of being able to lock your valuables to the bike, which will protect them from the elements or from opportunists who see a parked bike. I loved having those for storing my gear while I was out testing this thing around town. Now they also offer softer material panniers and different basket options for both the front or the rear. There's a whole bunch of different accessories on the Rad website. Now, if you're really looking to take as much with you as you possibly can, Rad's also debuting their new custom trailer that attaches easily to the rear axle, which enables you to haul another 100 pounds of gear. So if you're keeping score on all this, that's 350 pound payload of the bike and another 100 in the trailer, meaning you can move a total 450 pound payload. That is a whole lot that this bike can haul if you are really looking to drive less and ride more, 
that setup will help you do it. But what if you want the Runner 3 Plus for taking friends along? Human or otherwise? The Runner 3 works well for taking kids or adults too with the optional seat cushion that takes advantage of this elongated rack that has 120 pound weight capacity. Or you can get a pet trailer insert for the rad trailer to bring along four-legged friends as well. You're not lacking for customization in what you can do with the Runner 3 Plus. But to get a better sense of the bike's value, let's look at the total componentry package featured here on the Runner 3 Plus. The Rad Runner 3 Plus is a Class 2 e-bike, meaning it will travel up to 20 miles per hour via the pedal assist or the twist grip throttle on the right-hand side of the handlebar. That speed is provided courtesy of the 750-watt rear hub motor, producing up to 64 newton meters of torque, and a 672-watt-hour battery to, charge it, or to power it all. The battery can be removed for charging off the bike or making it easier to transport as the bike does weigh 75 pounds, but removing the battery helps you shave off about 8 pounds or so. The bike's drivetrain is a 7-speed Shimano Altus with the over-the-bar thumb shifter. It includes a 11 to 34 tooth 34 freewheel. The gearing is mostly adequate, though it ghost pedals just slightly when pushed to the 20 mile per hour motor limit. As this is a plus model and one of Rad's uh, more expensive models to date, I was hoping for maybe an 8th gear or a rapid fire shifter, but in all honesty, this one does get the job done. I'm a big fan of brakes, which are Tektro HD E350 hydraulic brakes with 180mm rotors here, which does activate a brake light on the included fender in the rear, and I love the extra visibility offered there. I like the tires. They are a custom Kenda tire, dubbed the K-Rad. It's a 20 inch by 3.3 inch wide tire that offers good puncture resistance and increased visibility with the reflective stripe on the side. The tread pattern rolls pretty well and it provides good traction. You can also lower the PSI a little bit if you're looking to make the ride even softer. But speaking of a soft ride, the uh, fork up front is an RST spring suspension with 60 millimeters of travel. It's got a preload adjust and progressive lockout. It does a solid job of making bumpier roads feel less hectic. It's also where the included headlight is mounted, uh, adding even more visibility. One of the changes I was most happy to see is the newly designed saddle. I was not a big fan of the previous Rad Runner Plus model as the saddle was pretty thin on padding, oddly shaped, and didn't provide any adjustment. Rad instead is providing a more typical looking saddle with plenty of cushion, and it's now on rails that you can adjust. The handlebar is nice. It's a BMX style high rise bar with a front and back tilt that help you find your ideal reach. I feel the reach overall is a little on the shorter side, but it's not uncomfortable in the slightest since you're uh, mostly upright on the bike and you don't really lean into your palms very much at all. Now, uh, also on the handlebar, it features faux leather grips on either side. It definitely fits the look of the bike and you get uh, not one, but two different uh, screens with this dual display setup. The left one it includes the buttons for changing your PAS level and it has a 10 bar battery readout. The center display shows you your odometer, speed, and lets you know how many watts you're running, which is nice as you can sort of gauge how quickly you'll drain your battery by how much motor output you're pushing. Honestly, I wish all e-bikes actually displayed this. It's really nice to have. Overall, it's a solid package of parts that rides around on a vastly improved frame. While that covers most of the key specs, any I may not have covered here, we will cover back on the EBR website from the link in the video description below. But now let's dive into our testing data to show you how the motor, battery, and brakes all perform. When riding around and enjoying any e-bike speed, you want to make sure adequate safety is included in the package, which is why we test out e-bikes braking capabilities. For our brake test here at EBR, we bring bikes up to 20 miles per hour before hitting the brakes and measuring the distance uh, it takes to stop. We try to stop as quickly as we can while also maintaining control of the bike in a fashion similar to how the average rider would. We do this multiple times to take an average stopping distance. The Rad Runner 3 Plus features a Tektro Hydraulic HD E350 setup on 180 millimeter rotors. It's a tried and true brake set that didn't disappoint here on the new runner. We had an average stopping distance of 20 feet 8 inches, which is a few inches better than our current average of all e-bikes and a couple feet shorter than most other utility bikes you'll have no problem stopping on the Runner 3 Plus. And I was actually surprised with just how well the bike kept its composure when braking. During my initial runner test ride, I performed a few brake slams from high speed to get a feel for how it would do. 
and I feel like I slowed down without deviating from my line even a single degree, stopping even in a track stand. It's a well-balanced bike and does a good job slowing the rider down in a hurry if needed. In order to gain a better sense of motor engagement, we put all the bikes we review on a circuit test. The course is a one mile loop with a small 30 foot climb. We do multiple laps on this course starting a, with a lap with no motor assistance, then one in each level of pedal assistance, or in this case, PAS one through five. With this, we can see the speed profile of the bike and get a sense of how well the motor engages with the rider. What you'll notice from the line chart that's on your screen is that this bike does a good job of providing meaningful assistance to the rider in each PAS level. The runner rolls better than I anticipated without motor assistance, although I always recommend planning to tap into the E element of your e-bike and use the motor, but as you can see, even the lowest PAS level helps you find a good cruising speed. The lower two levels are a sweet spot for light cruising or maintaining control if riding with a child or friend in the back, while PAS 3 through 5 provide much better speeds for traveling and assistance if you're loading your runner up with gear. This test also allows us to really gauge how the acceleration goes across the different levels. Some bikes are very mellow in lower PAS settings and then blow your hair back fast in higher ones. Rad motors typically do a great job of ramping you up across the different levels as you engage the pedals and the cadence sensor kicks the motor on. The sensors here are finely tuned and I feel like the bike always activates for me within a pedal stroke. I also appreciate the throttle for its ability to help get me going from a dead stop or to briefly take over on smaller hills. The Runner 3 Plus, like other runners before it, remains an appealing option for balancing fun speeds and predictable acceleration. The Rad Runner 3 Plus features a 48 volt, 14 amp hour, or 672 watt hour battery. So what does that mean in terms of range? Well, in order to find out, we did two separate range tests. One in the Rad Runner Plus's highest assistance setting, PAS5, and one in the lowest assistance setting, PAS1, to establish a real world value on how far you could get on this bike. And we had some pretty interesting results. Now, on their website, Rad claims a range of 25 to 45 miles on a single charge, and our results went beyond those marks. In our minimum PAS result, we had just over 60 miles, and in our max PAS test, we saw just over 26 miles. So a few notes and takeaways from this test. First, I'm never upset seeing that we got over what we were quoted. Now, it's important to remember with all of these tests that your results could vary based on a whole host of factors like rider weight and how many hills you encounter. But our bike paths feature plenty of hills, so it's nice to see it can score well on a regular commuting path. Second, while we're pretty pleased with that kind of mileage, you can bet that if you wanted to max out the 350 pounds of payload on the bike and haul up to 100 pounds more with the Rad trailer, that you probably wouldn't see that type of mileage. Now, Rad is actually in the works on offering an optional second battery that mounts below the rear rack here, which can double your range so you could kiss range anxiety goodbye. Rad said that one of their goals is to get people out of cars and onto e-bikes, and finding ways to increase range through good motor efficiency and increased capacity is a great way to achieve that goal. Outside of the sheer fun factor that e-bikes offer, they also help eliminate what most people cite as their main reason for not cycling more, hill intimidation. To better learn how an e-bike can help you conquer hills, we take each e-bike we review to the appropriately named Hellhole Trail, which features a climb that's a third of a mile long with a 12% average grade. It is much longer and steeper than most hills the average cyclist has to deal with on the daily, which is why we use it as our measuring stick for how well an e-bike can climb. Now, we did this test two times in both the max PAS and with just using the throttle to see what the bike can do for the rider or with the rider with the help of the, three, the 750 watt rear hub motor. In both hill tests, the Rad Runner 3 Plus did a solid job on the hills. In our throttle only result, we saw a time of a minute and 48 seconds with an average speed of 10 miles per hour. In our max PAS test, we saw a time of a minute 26 seconds with an average speed of 12.9 miles per hour. Overall, it's a result I'm pretty happy with. Rad motors are nothing if not consistent. This is the 10th different Rad bike we've put through our Hellhole Hill Test, and all of the models have climbed to the top within 10 seconds of each other on the max PAS test. 
the Rad Runner 3 Plus has enough juice in the tank to get a rider to the top of hills that shouldn't be achievable for a bike with over three inch wide tires and a relaxed riding position that keeps the rider upright. I did find in my time riding on this bike that it climbs best in the higher PAS settings. So if you cruise in PAS 2 or 3, anticipate bumping it up a notch or two as you approach steeper hills. Or you can of course ride the throttle a little bit for more help. But the gear range and motor power are enough to help you reach the top of most any hill you're likely to encounter. So we've talked about features, data, customization and more, but what's the bottom line? Is this a bike worth recommending? For me, it's a definite yes. I've often described the original Rad Runner Plus and Rad Runner 2 as bikes I could recommend to somebody even if I knew nothing about them. It fits most people, it's easy to use, it handles well, it features a super reliable motor and can be tailored to your needs with all the accessory configurations. If you're dreaming up a bike that would work for most any person, I just kind of described it. It covers age ranges and use cases across the board. But now, the Rad Runner 3 Plus makes even greater strides in terms of looks and function, while still being an uber dependable ride. Rad's made it more comfortable with the new saddle, riding position, and suspension fork. They've increased its capability with a stouter frame, meaning it has the highest payload of any Rad Runner to date, and more room on the rack for more gear or better comfort for the second passenger. There's new accessories with more combinations than you can shake a stick at, and even furry friends can now come along, or grocery trips are more realistic thanks to the new Rad trailer. The motor allows for fun trips across the spectrum of casual cruises to a zippier commute, and the battery has proved pretty efficient even riding along the Rad Runner plus uh, wide three inch tires. Where this is one of Rad's more pricier models to date, I was a little bit more nitpicky about a few things that I would typically wanna see in this price tier. I feel the cable management could be improved to see less of the cable connections here at the top, and more than one color option would be nice. And while it doesn't need an eighth gear necessarily or a fancier shifter, it would have been a welcome sight to see those offered. But like I said before, those are mainly things I'd hope to see, and the bike doesn't actually suffer from the lack of these things. It still delivered the best runner experience that I have had to date, which was already a great ride coming from one of the biggest names in the e-bike industry, with a pretty good reputation for making e-bikes. The utility e-bike market is becoming more crowded, but clearly one of its pioneers is keeping up with the times and still showcasing the ability to innovate. Rad stated they wanted people in cars less and on e-bikes more, and the fun and optionality offered on the Rad Runner 3 Plus will certainly make an appealing case for getting people on two wheels. That's it for this review of the Rad Runner 3 Plus. Thank you for watching. If you found this review helpful, please give this video a like. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the Electric Bike Report channel and hit that notification bell. And for current pricing on the Rad Runner 3 Plus or for more on the data we collected while testing it, see the links in the video description below. I'm Griffin Hales with EBR and we'll see you on the next review.